morning, Miss Bowen. Good morning, Yeah, no, he hasn't. Oh. Look, Miss Borden, I've been trying to see Mr. Summers for three days. Oh, I know. I'm not going to hold up my contract much longer. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, gentlemen, but Mr. Summers is doing some very important work. If I could just talk to him on the phone. Well, he left a message not to be disturbed by anyone. Oh, isn't that so, Bailey? Yes, Miss Borden. Uh, I promise you I'll call you the minute he's free. Really, I will. Hasn't even phoned yet? No, and I am worried. We can't bid unless he goes over these plans soon. Which means we'll probably lose a job. Well, good morning, Miss Elliot. I'm waiting to see Mr. Summers, of course. Yes? Bailey, if you catch him before he gets in here, I think you can see the boss this morning. Oh, uh, by the way, I hear Mr. Summers rented a place quite near your beach house. Yes, he came down to bake in the sun for the last few days. The poor dear. The poor dear, did he? Oh, he's so susceptible. Well, if he's been exposed for three days, I'm afraid he's cooked by now. Simply cooked. ABC Club. Pelican Club. Barney Saloon. Good morning, Mr. Summers. Shh. Has she left yet? Well, get rid of her. Go on, go on, get her out of here. Permanently. Permanently? I'd love to. Miss Elliot has left. She has? She did leave a message, however. She said... She said she never wanted to see you again. Thank you, Miss Gordon. The Albany power plant stuff came in Tuesday. I heard Decker and company were hot on it, so I sent in a bid without waiting. Well, that's fine, Miss Gordon. On Monday, I had your attorney take 10% out of your drawing account and buy war bonds. Good. Evans has been a daily visitor. But I stalled him, and I think he'll wait. Oh, and I sent your trout route out to be rewound. Well, looks like everything's ship -shape. Except the housing project. The deadline on submitting the blueprints is tomorrow. Well? Well, I thought you might as well put Bailey on something else. Forget submitting a bid. Changes barely for season. The plans can't be made in four days, maybe more. They can't, eh? Come here. Oh, that's wonderful. You've been working all week. No, nope, just last night. All this? Well, I worked all night. Now, if I can only find the right woman, we'll be finished by evening. Woman? Yeah. Say, wait a minute. You're a woman? Oh, <laughs> I should have thought of that. Pretend like you've got a hot iron in your hand. Oh. Forty-four and a half. Write that down, will you? Mm -hmm. I want to get the right closet, ironing board, and sink heights for the average woman. Now, reach out. Mm. That's it. Twenty-eight. You know, when we get these right, you and I are going to lock ourselves in here and knock out that Evans job that takes all week. Now, stoop oh, over. Good. Forty-three. Oh, excuse me. Bailey! Have these blueprinted right away. If you want me, I'll be in the drafting room. Caught him on the rebound, eh? Take it easy. Been here two years and he's just discovered I'm a female. What gave him a clue? I'm just closet height. Rush these and prepare to live here. We're going to lock ourselves in till we knock out the Evans plant. He's through with women again. And for how long? I don't know. This may be the cure. That Elliot Dame was pretty bitter medicine. Don't bet on it. He's a sucker for romance and there isn't any cure. What's more, if he's going to be closeted with you day and night, I'd be careful, Miss Borden. You're liable to be next. Don't worry. I'm safe. Where am I? Come in. What's this? Time for dinner already? You can go right over there. Time to eat. Mm. Oh, heavens, I must call Ralph. He picks me up every evening. Hello, Lucille, would you get me Ralph? He's so foolish about things like that. Be just like him to wait all night. Hello, Ralph. Emily, honey. 
You're not. But I am worried. Miss Emily, certain unsavory rumors have convinced me this Yankee you're working for is a cad. And I don't think it's safe to work at night. Oh, but Ralph, he wouldn't. Yes, Ralph. No, dear. Yes. Silly. <laughs> oh, but he wouldn't. Emily, what's happening? Nothing, dear. Don't worry so. Yes, Ralph. Yes, Ralph. Yes, dear, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, dear, I have to go now. It's sweet of you to worry. <laughs> Good night. Who is that? Oh, a friend of yours, huh? Oh, ho! What's all this? Mm. Designed to rest the weary worker. A very handsome private dining room. Now, if we only had a bottle of wine. Why, well, won't this do? Mm. An old fashioned. You're wonderful. I can't see you. Well, here's to the Evans job. Yes? A lady to see Mr. Summers. A lady to see you. Well, get rid of her. Be right out, Miss Hill. Oh, uh, may I see Henry? Mr. Summers can't be disturbed now. Well, I wouldn't think of disturbing you. I wonder if I might leave just a small note? Of course, I'll get some station. Thank you, I have my own. Why didn't you tell me that Constance was waiting? You told me to get rid of her. Oh, oh, yes. Well, as long as she's here, I suppose I ought to uh, just say hello. Might as well knock off for the rest of the night, as a matter of fact. Get an early start in the morning. Oh, but we can't quit now. After I got all those figures and stalled off Evans of and got course, the basic Of course, of course, and you're tired. I'm not tired. I don't mind working day and night. Of course you don't. You deserve a raise. I don't want a raise. Nevertheless, I'm going to give you a $10 boost. No, a good secretary is a hard thing to find. Make it 20. Well, after all, Miss Boyd. 20 or nothing. Take it or leave it, chum. What's the trouble, Emily? Nothing. Is it that Yankee masher? Why? Oh, come on, Ralph. Not until this is settled. He never even touched me. Except to measure me for a closet. A closet? But I'm only thinking of you. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Ralph, drop it, please. Gran! Gran! Why, Emily! 
Emily, you said you were working. And dear Ralph, I've just been watering my victory garden. Oh, may I? Oh, thank you. That old watering can be just nearly cutting off my hair. Oh, you shouldn't even try such heavy work. Well, in these days, work is our duty. As long as you don't get a snapping at each other like I heard you all doing just now. Come on, what is it? It's that Summers fellow, Mrs. Borden. Mr. Summers? Why, what ever's he done? Nothing, Gran, absolutely nothing. Now, Emily, something has happened. You'll feel much better if you tell Gran all about it. But, Gran, there's nothing to tell. Oh, yes, there is. Now, you sit right down and start talking. Did Mr. Summers say something you didn't like? No. Was it because Mr. Summers made you work tonight? No. Was it because Mr. Summers wants you to work tomorrow night? No. Mr. Summers didn't discharge you. Oh, no. You know, I don't think I'm wanted here. I said, I don't think I'm wanted here. Good night. Good night, Ralph. Good night, Ralph. Now, what's it all about? He makes me so mad. He has so much talent, and what's he do? Wastes his life, neglects his business. Oh. It's Mr. Summers' business you're worried about. I thought perhaps he made a pass at you. Now, whatever gave you that idea? Wishful thinking, I guess. Gran. Shock you? Good. And maybe be honest with yourself. And if you are, you'll probably need a drink. And I'd better have one myself, because I'm too old to go through this every time Henry Summers chases a blonde. And you're old enough now to admit that you'd like him to chase you. There isn't anything like that between me and him. Mr. Summers. I just want to see him get ahead, and I've done everything I can to help him. I even took architectural drawing and business law. I practice shorthand at night so he won't have to repeat himself. Order his socks and his shirts. You can tell him when to get a haircut. Yes, and for all he knows, you might be a trained seal. I don't have any sex appeal. Well, oh, you should do too. You just don't know how to use it. I wish you hadn't lost your southern accent. That always kills him. I wish I'd lived in your day. Sit under a magnolia tree and be pursued. Just sit under a tree and beat him off with a club. Till Henry came along. Good old days when Grandpa chased you around the magnolia tree. Good old days. <laughs> if you knew what I did to hook Grandpa. Emily. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Emily, I've got an idea. What is it, Gran? Well, Grandpa was courting my oldest cousin. And he used to bring me dolls when I was 17. Imagine. I wanted to marry him, and he brought me dolls. But I fixed that. Now, let's see. There is a thing. What is it, a love potion? Love potion? <laughs> Before I was through with him, he thought I was the most glamorous woman of Virginia. I, I, I mean, South Carolina. I know, witchcraft. <laughs> Don't be insulting. I was just as attractive as you are. But I had the same problem, to make him see it. Now, once you do that, he'll love you for your real qualities. But you've got to have mystery, glamour. And that's what we're going to give you. How? Oh, here it is. Now, listen to this. If it got Grandpa, it's a cinch for Henry. You are no doubt surprised at receiving a letter from a total stranger, but I hope soon your surprise will be replaced by the same sweet longing that inspires me to write. Our eyes met for an instant. You do not know where, nor dare I tell you. And I was lost. <laughs> How long must it be till I know that moment again? You see? Now, after a few more like that, I had him so crazy to meet me that when we finally made a rendezvous... He wanted to put you in a booby hatch. He did not. He was so flattered, he never woke up till after we were married. And then he loved it. Men are pushovers for flattery. But not corn, darling. No, I guess I'm just going to be an old maid.
the matter, Miss Borden? A little party last night? I'm not sure. I think I was caught in a cement mixer. Well, here's another headache for you. It smells like a new menace. Ah, oh, L'Amour, L'Amour. Lucille, get my home. Gran. Listen, Gran, last night when I was... Well, you know, I didn't write a... Oh, I did? But, Gran, I couldn't if I threw that bottle of precious night away. Oh. Oh. Pink lady. That's what your sign did. And you said you adore the way he wears his hat and the way he swaggers when he walks and that you watch him every day as he strolls across the park to lunch, not daring to reveal your identity. Well, thank heaven I found out in time. I certainly am going to tear it up. Good morning. Good morning. Gran, that is isn't answering with the mails. After all, I wrote the letter. I can tear it up. Oh! Um, this is, uh, this one's probably Evans' revisions on the assembly line. Don't you think you better get right at that? These other things can wait. Um, don't you think we ought to write to Evans and tell him that his revisions received and noted? Yes, yes, I, uh, I think that's a very good idea. Mr. Summers. What time is my luncheon appointment? Twelve sharp. Well, cancel it. I'm leaving town. Somebody, bud? I guess not. Get out there where you can see you. Relax. Look carefully. What'll he do when he finds out it's me? He sees you. It is a lovely day, isn't it? Love. Well, but, uh, uh, Miss Borden. It's a lovely day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. Quite surprised finding you here. Quite a surprise finding you here. Oh, yes. Well, a uh, fellow wired me from Detroit. He wanted to meet me here. He's more private, you know. And, well, Detroit's such a big city. Yes, it is. Look mighty sharp today. Thank you. Well, I think I'll try to find my friend. How do you do, Mrs. Borden? Why, hello, Mr. Summers. <laughs> Hasn't your friend showed up yet? Or maybe he will. If he does, he won't find me here. Pleasant place to be stuck in. It is. 
But even so, I was all set to be pretty lonely. Lost, nothing to do. I'm sure glad you came down here. Always happy to be of help. Yes, you are, aren't you? But I wish you wouldn't say it quite that way. What should I say? Well, you might say, I'm glad you're down here, too. I haven't seen much of you lately. Then you say? How about having dinner with me tonight? I have an awfully nice suite overlooking the ocean. Oh, but then there's your grandmother, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> don't mind me. <laughs> I, I'm going right to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so sleepy. <laughs> Until eight, then, at the Royal Pines. Fine. Hope he never finds out I'm the pink lady. I'm afraid he'll think I was making a fool of him. Well, now that his eyes have been opened, why tell him? I keep it as a secret for your great-grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get this, sir. Never mind. Lovely, you look. Thank you. I don't deserve this, you know, finding you in Rock Point. Date, no doubt about it. I thought we'd have cocktails on the balcony. I'd like that. Shall I wait for you to ring, sir? You can serve whenever you like. Give me five minutes. Yeah, OK, OK. You know, we should stay down here a couple of weeks. Why is that? Sugar? Three, please. And you, sir? Oh, uh, no, no, none for me, please. You said something about staying here. Have you seen yourself in a mirror after a day in the sun? Look pretty fit, eh? Like you could bend horseshoes. I bet we'd get that Evans job done like that down here. You know, I'm going to have to be careful. You're beginning to restore my faith in women. You understand the importance of a man's business affairs. You... <laughs> well, I won't go on. I can't afford another $20 raise. Please do, I promise it won't cost anything. <laughs> Excuse me. Would you like some more coffee, miss? No, thank you. Would you like some nice peach melba, miss? No, thank you. Would you like anything else, miss? Yes. No, 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 no. Yes? Oh, yes, I did call you, Mr. Evans. No, no, nothing to worry about. Definitely. I'll have the entire setup for you in the morning. Miss Borden is here, and we're going to work all night if necessary. Right. I'll see you the first thing in the morning. Would you like anything else, sir? No, thanks. I don't want to waste any more time. I'll clear the table in the moment. No, 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 no. Never mind that. Oh, by the way, you might put something aside in case the kitchen closes. Don't you think that's a good idea? You know what I'm driving at. No, sir, I don't. Well, some cold cuts, maybe some cheese, some pickles, some rye bread, olives, that sort of thing. Now you understand, don't you? Yes, sir. I understand perfectly. Good, fine. Don't you want to get out of your jacket? Oh, I think I'd like a cigarette, would you? Thanks. It's a gorgeous night, and it's still early yet. Don't let the Eastern wartime fool you. Would you like some beer with your cold cut, sir? I know, I know. Five minutes. Oh, Mr. Summers, I'm sorry. Well, I just want you to be comfortable. We're going over the Evans revisions, and it may take hours. Oh. What's more, it's just plain unnatural for a woman to work. Yes, Ralph. Of course, a Yankee will tell you times have changed. Yes, Ralph. But I say a woman is still something sacred to be cherished and protected in the home. Emily, it must be well nigh unendurable working for that Summers fellow. Yes, Ralph. I knew it. Emily, I'm not going to conceal my feelings any longer. I want to take you away from all this. Have I the right to speak? Yes, Ralph. Thank you. Of course, this isn't exactly the place, but knowing how I feel, I hope you'll forgive me when I say right out. Emily, will you marry me? Yes, Ralph. Emily, you made me the happiest man in the world. I never thought you'd really consent to be my wife. Did I do that? Yes, you did. 
I'll meet you tonight. Well, I might as well get married. Nobody else seems to want me. Speaking to us, lady? No. Excuse me. I'm sorry I'm so late, Mr. Summers. Perfectly all right. I should have given you the day off after last evening. But we were working. Oh, by the way, if anybody calls, I may not be in the office. Miss Powell and I are going to the Waldorf for lunch. If you were smart, you'd stay away from this office for a week and get some rest. I know a perfectly wonderful spot in the Adirondacks. Oh, Miss Borden doesn't approve. I'm afraid I've said the wrong thing. I'm sure it's none of my concern. I think it's very sensible of you to give up worrying about Henry. I'm sure it wouldn't do you any good anyway. I want to see Mr. Summers. He's busy now. Can I help you? No. Is that his hangout in there? He can't be disturbed. If you'd like to leave a message... The message I got, I'll deliver personal. You Summers? Why, well, yes. Here you are, buddy. I was told to give that to you and to nobody else. Sorry, Mr. Summers. Relax, sister. The shooting is over. Call Tucker and have him pack my bags. I'm sorry, Constance. You'll have to excuse me. It's very important. Say, what does he get in those letters? Adrenaline? Psst, Miss Borden. Yes? Is my insurance paid up? Oh, yes. Is there anything wrong? Yes, plenty. Anything I can do? You can lock that door. I got myself into this. I'll have to get myself out. Is it a, a woman? Yeah. Well, maybe I could do something to help. No, thanks. It's liable to be pretty messy, if not actually rough. Goodness, have you been threatened? How was I to know her boyfriend was a gangster? A gangster? Yes, and he wants to air condition me, but right now... Well, then that man was his, his henchman. Huh? Maybe. No, no, a friend of hers, apparently. I'll call the police. No, 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 no. That'd make it only messier. Well, maybe you better get out of town. That's been suggested, but where? You go up to your place in Connecticut. That's fine. That's perfect. Bad roads, miles from anywhere. Uh -uh. I've got to finish the Evans job. He's okayed everything, but he won't stand for any more delays. Well, you could work up there. No, no, you've got too many of the facts and figures in your head. I couldn't do it without you. No use even trying. Unless you'd come with me. Of course I... No, 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 I shouldn't even have suggested it. We couldn't stay up there together. Alone. No. Unless Grandma would want... You think she would? Oh, I could ask her. Well, that's swell. That's, that's fine, Miss Borden. You're an angel. Oh, I wouldn't talk about things like that. You may be one yourself soon. <laughs> Hello, Gran. Why, Mr. Summers, what a pleasant surprise. How do you do, Mrs. Borden? Why, you young folks are all out of breath. Well, we're in sort of a hurry, Granny. Now, now, now. Fix Mr. Summers a nice, cool lemonade. Oh, well, I don't think we have time. Oh, fiddlesticks, child. Go on now. All right. Won't you sit down, Mr. Summers? You see, Grand, a business matter. Well, I mean, something came up that makes it awfully important for Mr. Summers to go up to his place in Connecticut and work for a few days undisturbed. And he needs the... Oh, I forgot the sugar. And so... We wondered if, well, we wondered, well, we wondered if you wondered what? Uh, well, we wondered if you'd go along as a chaperone. Well, if it's as urgent as it seems, of course, dear. I take it you're in a hurry, Mr. Summers. Oh, yes, we're in a hurry. Well, then let's get our things together right away, honey. Well, what's the matter with you, child? You're all jittery. I can't explain now, Graham. We've just got to get packed and... <laughs> well, it, it, it's, it's lucky I didn't unpack our things from the beach. But anyway, we're all set to go. You unpacked everything before I left this morning. Oh, nonsense, Emily. I see you burnt the pink note paper like I asked you to. Oh, now, now, we mustn't keep Mr. Summers waiting. My dearest Henry, I'm sorry I couldn't meet you at Rock Point, my darling, but I was afraid because when he found I was writing to you, he was furious. 
Suppose you wrote like that to Grandpa. <laughs> He's insanely jealous and he's sworn to shoot you. Despite anything I could say, and you must get out of town at once. Well, I, I figured that you could work such wonders with a few weeks alone in the country, and I wish... Emily, what are you doing? Oh, Gran, how could you do it? You should have known I didn't want to go on with this awful business. Now, just a minute. I did know that, but I knew, too, that you were given up before you were late. I'm not going to do it. I think it's undignified. Now, listen to me, child. I... Well, maybe I have been hasty and stupid and blind. I thought I knew how you felt, but perhaps... I was sure you loved him. Do you love him? That's beside the point. Do you love him? Yes. Good. You know, fundamentally, I think you have the right feminine hunting instincts if you only give them a chance. <laughs> I remember one time in Charleston, I met a traveling... Well, we won't go into that. But anyway, you did just the right thing, as I knew you would. When you suggested that romantic place of his in Connecticut, you did suggest it, didn't you? Golly, Gran, what if it wasn't your naughty God? What if it was a real thing? What do you mean? Oh, the most awful-looking man delivered the letter that started this. It must have been the real thing. He looked like a gangster. Oh, you mean Nick. Well, I figured that was the kind of note that would carry more punch if it was delivered by just the right messenger. My bookie. He was just closed up. <laughs> oh, darling. <laughs> uh, well, I just hope we can keep it straight. Here, Henry's running away from some trouble over the pink lady and taking me with him, and I'm her. I mean, she's... Gosh, pretty soon I wonder whether I'm the pink lady or me. <laughs> All set. How about Grandma? Is she ready? <laughs> What is it, Mrs. Borden? Oh, yeah. I'm afraid it's my horrid old back. I'm afraid this means I'll have to stay here. Well, take it easy, darling. Don't overdo it. I'll try, but... Oh, no. Well, it's nothing serious. I'll be all right, but I'll just have to stay here. But you'll need Emily here to care for you. Oh, no, no. Mrs. Addison always sees me through these spells. Emily'd only be in the way. Now, please, you must go. I know it's important, and I'll be all right, won't I, Emily? Yes, you'll be all right. Well, don't you worry about a thing, Mrs. Borden. I know how you'd feel about Emily and me being alone up at my place at Connecticut. So we'll go to a little hotel that I know that's just as quiet. The Empire in Utica, where there'll be lots of people around to act as chaperones. Uh, you go along, Henry. You can wait outside. I'll call Mrs. Addison. Keep your chin up, Mrs. Borden. Goodbye, darling. Thanks for being so broad-minded. Eureka. I can't understand why she didn't tell me she was planning to go out of town. Where'd she go? She went to Utica. Beg your pardon? Utica! Oh. Well, I certainly don't like the idea of her going all the way off to Utica alone. I said I certainly don't like the idea of her going all the way off to Utica alone. Ralph, there's nothing to fret about. It's just a little old business trip. I don't imagine she'll be gone very long, not more than a couple of weeks at most. And she didn't go alone. Oh, she didn't? Heavens, no. I wouldn't dream of letting her go alone. She went with Mr. Summers. Oh, well, as long as she... Summers? She's gone for a few weeks with Summers? Yes, it seems he had some work to do that was so important he wanted to go somewhere where they wouldn't be disturbed. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Borden. Now, don't you worry. There's absolutely nothing to be alarmed about. No need to worry at all. <clears throat> but I'm not worried. Ah, uh, oh, that's right, you're not. Well, you should be. Ah, uh, that is, you shouldn't be. There's absolutely no reason to be concerned about a thing. <clears throat> Ralph, you're upset about something. You don't think there could be anything wrong. Wrong? <laughs> of course not. What could be wrong? What could be wrong? Um, 
Which hotel are they? Uh, is she? Where are they staying? Just in case I want to send Emily a postcard or something. The Empire. Oh. Uh, would you like these, Mrs. Borden? <laughs> Good evening. You see, it's not so bad after all. Your grandmother's peace of mind means something. Well, I still think Connecticut would have been better. After all, the right atmosphere counts a lot when you're trying to do good work. Well, in a noisy city... Don't you worry about the noise and atmosphere. As a matter of fact, this is one of the quaintest, quietest places I know of. It's charming, really. I used to come here when I was a kid. Got to be crazy about it. Parents' influence, I guess. Mother and dad met here and fell in love. They used to like to come back. Said it made them feel romantic all over again. Oh, well, if it puts you in that kind of a mood. I mean, in such a good mood, I don't mind. But they ain't even married. You ain't kidding. Certainly it's quaint. There's no doubt about it. Quiet, too. How do you do? I'm Mr. Summers, and this is Miss Borden, my secretary. Hmm. Uh, you know, I used to stay here a few years ago. Oh, really, I did. My mother and dad used to bring me here when I was a kid. May I speak to Mr. McCready, please? Mr. McCready has been dead for 10 years. Mrs. McCready is the manager now. Oh, well, how do you do, Mrs. McCready? Perhaps you remember me. Well, anyway, I'd like two rooms, uh, adjoining rooms. You see, we have a little work to do, and we'd like, well, we'd like adjoining rooms. I'm afraid we have nothing quite like that available. Maybe we could give you something on the same floor. Right this way, Mr. Summers, you and your secretary. You're going to find this a nice, quiet place to work in. I can imagine. Will this be satisfactory for you, Mr. Summers? Oh, yes. Fine, fine. Oh, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. As long as we're going to have to work in one room, I'd like to have an extra table. You know, one with a big top. Why, certainly, Mr. Summers. But upon second thought, I really think you'll find... If you do your work in the solarium, you'll be much more comfortable there. I suppose it's all glass. Three sides. That's just what I thought. I'll show you to your room, Miss Borden. And there'll be no ginger ale or ice served in the rooms. Good evening. Good evening. Show me the little place you have here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Rather stuffy in here, isn't it? That's what I was thinking. May I open a window for you? Never mind. May I get you some ice water? Never mind. Is there anything I can do for you? Never mind. Well then? Never mind. see Miss Borden. Please. Yes, Miss Borden's room number is... Uh... Of course, I'll have to announce you now. Your name, please? Ralph Cobb. 
Ralph, what? Come! She doesn't answer. I don't understand it. Someone took the receiver off the hook, but no one answered. Try Mr. Summers' room. S-U-M-M-E-R-S? Yes, that's right. Ring number three, please. No answer. Thanks. I'll wait. from some book salesman. Do you really think that was a guy no, that... the clerk phoned and said a man wanted to see you and he wouldn't leave his name, so... Oh, well, I had visions of that gangster standing over you with a smoking gun and you lying there on the floor dead. Oh, I know it sounds silly, but... No, no, wait. That was the guy. I remember now seeing him hanging around outside the office ever since I got that first letter from her. Casing the joint. But how do you suppose he traced me up here? Well, maybe he's a big shot. You know they have spies in every town. Yeah. Emily, this is an emergency. I'm afraid we must go to my place in Connecticut. I'm sure that's just what Grandma would want. Well, this is it. Oh, it certainly is it. This is definitely the place to work. You should see it by moonlight. It's like being in another world. Can't wait. Wonderful. Particularly after that quaint hotel. Yeah, that's become quite a place. The way that old McCready dame acted was certainly ridiculous. It certainly was ridiculous. Ooh. Hey, hey, what's this? Mm, it's quite a ride without any sleep. Ooh, why don't you take a nap? That's a good idea. That's your room in there. I'll take your bag. You get a beautiful view of the stream from here. I bunk in the other wing. Oh, I'm going to love it up here. I feel so fresh and free. Uh, it certainly is. I do some of my best work up here. Yes? That 
man's here. We've got to move again. What man? Who? The gangster, the guy with the gun. Oh, well, look, we don't have to move. He's never seen you. Yeah, but if he finds out... Now, wait, 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 wait. See him. Stall him. Tell him you're... Well, anybody. Get rid of him. We'll be safer here than ever. Yeah, but... but who? I tell him I am. Anybody. Yeah, but who? Anybody but Henry Summers. Go on. Are you Henry Summers? <laughs> oh, no, sir. I'm Mr. Summers' caretaker, sir. Well, I want to see Mr. Summers. Oh, but he's not here, sir. No, I have a good reason to expect him to be here. Oh, he never comes up here anymore. You see, the, uh, the hemlock gives him hay fever. You mean he never comes here? Oh, no, sir. It makes him deathly ill. Oh. Well, I thought he might be here with a lady, I know, but I guess it was mistaken. The, uh, the mill's rather hard to find. Have you been here before? No, uh, I don't know this, uh, Mr. Summers. <laughs> Thank you. I just know a lot about him. Oh, I see. You say you were looking for a young lady that you thought might be with Mr. Summers. Do you think I'd know her, sir? No, that's not important. Just as you say, sir. Only I thought I might be able to get in touch with her, uh, them, if you'd care to give me her name. Oh, no, forget it. It's really no bother, sir. And if you'll stay for supper, I'm sure that after a few tasty brook trout, we'll find some way to locate the young lady. Oh, that's just the missus cleaning up for supper. Will you stay, sir? Well, maybe I will. As a matter of fact, it's such a tough drive back in the dark. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if you might put me up for the night. Oh, oh, well, well, certainly, sir, gladly. We're going to have a guest for supper, dear. <laughs> I uh, guess she didn't hear me. Will you follow me, sir? Yeah. I'm sure she'll be awfully pleased. We see so few people. <laughs> Where are you, dear? We're going to have a guest for supper. Oh, no, we ain't. I'm sick and tired of cooking for your cronies. And if you don't get him out of here, I'm going to leave you like I said. Sure as my name is Emma. <laughs> uh, child bride from Kentucky. It's all right, dear. This is a nice gentleman from the city. I ain't coming out till he gets out of here. <laughs> She's uh, such a shy little thing. Yes, I understand. Thoroughly. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be with you in a minute. Yeah. Maybe your wife would rather I wouldn't stay for supper. Now, look, you just sit down here and make yourself comfortable. I'll be right back. Everybody. Hey, wait! Don't you know you're playing with dynamite? What if he should spot your briefcase or one of those letters with your name on them? Yeah? Well, that phony accent of yours didn't help any either. Well, the point is we can't get away with it. We're going to have to clear out until he leaves. Move over. Walk away, though. 
If it's a long siege, we'll have food and shelter at least. Let's go. All right. Hey, wait for me. Oh. Watch your step. Might land in a bear trap. Oh, are the bears up here? I doubt it. Charlie, that's my caretaker. You'll meet him if we ever get back to the cabin. He thinks he almost caught one back in 1924. Oh. He hasn't given up trying since. Oh, are they big bears? Don't worry about them. They exist only in Charlie's imagination. I think. I'm not so good at this sort of thing. Trailblazing, I mean. Ah! Hey! Hey, where are you? Down here. <laughs> Come on. Just hang on to me. Nothing will happen to you. You're doing fine. Thank you. We nearly there? Yeah. Another two miles. Well, here we are. Robber's Roost, once used by that notorious bad man, Henry Summers. We used to hide out here at the end of every summer vacation when his parents prepared to send him back to school. How do you like it? Well, oh, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> you feel better now? Mm-hmm. So do I. I haven't had so much fun since I was a kid. There's only one thing to mar the perfection of the sea. What's that? You have a dirty face. I have. <laughs> and a very pretty face, too. What did you say? I said, I think you're beautiful, Miss Borden. Then what did you do? You're going to go on saying things like that. And I hope you are. Well, would you mind calling me Emily? Oh, what did I call you? Sporden. Do I call you that all the time? Mm -hmm. I do? Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. Miss Borden suggests glasses and cuff guards and cotton stockings. You don't wear glasses or cuff guards or cotton stockings. I don't know why I didn't notice all this before. There are too many pretty faces in the way. Oh, I don't remember any pretty faces. And if you stop to think about it, you'll realize there weren't any. The truth is, I think I've been in love with you for a long time and didn't even have sense enough to realize it. All those girls you think you remember were just a poor attempt to find you. Thanks. Believe me, Emily, it's true. I'm glad. I guess I'm well, kind of old-fashioned. If you're thinking about my my past, you're worrying about ancient history. Well, let's not talk about that. Whatever you say. Just as long as you eventually say yes. I uh, I see by the stars it's half past time to say goodnight. May I uh, tuck you in? This makes a good bed. Henry? Hmm? Yes, what? Nothing. <laughs> Don't suppose there's anything we can do about it anyway. Oh, well, well, what is it? I'm thirsty. Oh. Well, <laughs> I guess I can take care of that. Uh, there's a well out there somewhere. I, uh, I'll be back in a minute. Don't go to sleep before I get back. No, I won't.
Henry. Henry! Somewhere. Oh. Are you hurt? Are you hurt? What happened? I went to get you a drink of water, remember? Oh, darling, you shouldn't have gone to all that trouble. Do you think it's safe to go back now? That gangster may still be at the mill. We're not going to the mill. We're going back to town. Back to town? Having to sit in that old well last night made me do some thinking. You remember what you said last night about the future could wait? Well, I'm afraid it'll have to. I realized last night that I couldn't ask you to marry me now. Not to be honest with you. Well, what is it, Henry? I don't even want to discuss it. Well, you know it doesn't make any difference, whatever it is now. Well, it's... It's that business that got us up here. Oh, that. Oh, well, I'm sure that fellow will forget No, wait a minute. It, it's not only him I'm worried about. It's the woman. I don't even know who she is. You see, you have to know the whole situation to understand. It, it seems that she saw me somewhere and... Well, I suppose it sounds silly, but she became infatuated with me without even having met me. That's not silly. Then she started writing me those letters, those pink notes. Yes. Well, she's obviously the type who'd kick up a scandal. Well, you said you didn't even know her. That crazy boyfriend of hers who wants to shoot people is just a sample. Don't you see, darling? I can't ask you to marry me when there's a possibility that something unpleasant might happen that could involve you. Oh, really, Henry? I'm not the least bit worried. Well, it's wonderful of you to feel that way, but there's only one safe course. Honestly, I think we're going... A woman to... who would write letters that way must be pretty odd. Might even be psychopathic, for all I know. Certainly, she's not the type that I'd want you to have to meet. I want to find her or have my lawyers find her and have a good talk with her. Oh. Henry, I'm afraid you'll start something that will upset everything. Now, don't you think about it anymore. This is my worry. You just climb in so we can get out of here and clear this thing up as soon as possible. I'm going to face this issue squarely. Boyfriend or no boyfriend. Henry, about that woman, I don't think... Darling, I won't have another word about it. It's the least I can do. Henry. Henry! Hmm? What? I forgot to tell you something. What? I love you. Good! Remember that. Hey! Hey! Howdy. Are you Henry Summers? Nope. Do you know where he is? Yep. Well, where is he, man? In that car. In that car? Don't be silly. That's, uh... Henry Summers. That's Henry Summers. It is! Is it? Hmm? It is! Let's get out of here! Like to see him? All night. Hmm. But I didn't have a chance to call any sooner, Gran. We came here right from the cavey, so anxious to look for the pink lady. Oh, yes, but we've got to do something right away. He's already called his lawyers. To look for. I can't come home now. They're coming right over. Once they start snooping around, it may be too late. But why in goodness name didn't you tell him the truth this morning, child? 
Oh, I couldn't. Not after what he said about... about women who write letters like that. Now, now, don't forget that up to last night he was very interested in that kind of woman. And I'll bet, no matter what he said, that he'll think you even more glamorous, more desirable if... Gran, we've got that quickly if we're going to stop this investigation. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Yes? Mr. Linkletter? Mr. Lodebach, Mr. Zion Switzer, and Mr. Oh, sorry, I never can remember your name. Smith. Of course, and Smith. The attorneys just went in. There isn't a second to lose. I'm Mr. O'Hara of the Essential Investigation Agency. I have an appointment with Mr. Summers. Private detectives. Oh, go right in, Mr. O'Hara. Oh, I don't think anything will stop it now. He's got detectives, too. But we'll try anyway, so hurry, Graham. Please hurry. And there are all the pink letters to prove it. So you haven't omitted any details? That's the whole story, gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to inspect these notes once more. She must be quite a woman. You ain't kidding, bud. Oh, gosh, I thought you were never coming. Where is it? Now, 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 don't be nervous. I'm sure this will fix everything. Did you write what I said? Well, close enough. It says that you, that is the pink lady, feels that she's caused him so much trouble that she's stepping out of his life forever. This is goodbye. She's taking the first plane out tonight for Florida, hoping he'll forgive her and forget her. But don't you understand? It has to be a stranger. I still think it might be someone already acquainted with you. But that doesn't make sense. These letters Could be an attempt to revive interest in someone you've been ignoring. Ah, that's impossible. Nevertheless, I'd like the address and telephone number of every woman you know. Uh, even business contacts and associates. A messenger just brought this. Gentlemen, our problem has just been solved in a completely unforeseen way. There's no further need for investigation. Well, does she reveal who she is? It's not important anymore. You're going to forget about the whole thing. Well, that is a relief. Don't forget. I'll send you a check anyway, Mr. Lucky dog. Thank you. Mr. Linkletter? Thank you. Mr. Lauderpath? Thank you. Mr. Zahnson? I still think in case anything like this comes up again, a list of addresses and telephone numbers would be nice to have. Henry, there's something I have to tell you. I know I should have told you last night, but, well, I couldn't, and then... then this morning you didn't give me a chance. You see... You were saying something, Miss Borden? No. No, not a thing. Yes, Mr. Summers? Lucille? Find out what time the next plane leaves for Florida. I'm sure it's only a hangover from the old days, honey. Just a habit. Nothing more than that. Hello, oh, Ralph. Well, Hello, Emily. Miss Borden. I came to ask if my impression that our engagement is broken is correct. I suppose so, Ralph. Sorry, I can't think of anything to say. And I presume Mr. Summers is to be congratulated. As a matter of fact, I gather that you and he may even be already married. At the moment, Mr. Summers is preparing to pursue another woman. If you permit me as a friend of the family, Miss Borden, I'll attend to this. Oh! oh. Well, Mr. Oh, Summers, if you've anything to say for yourself, I suggest you start talking. I'll give you just five minutes. Look out! He's got a gun! Oh! Oh, so you want to fight, hmm? Fight? Now, wait a minute, pal. 
We can talk this over, can't we? <laughs> Sir, it'd be a pleasure. <laughs> Not that I mind mixing it up. After all the inconvenience you've caused me. But after all, I'm a little bit bigger than you are. Mm-hmm. So you are. You know, after this is all over, you're going to discover that nothing's happened. And you're going to feel pretty silly because your girlfriend wasn't even with me. <laughs> oh. Oh, so you deny she was with you. Why, you... I've never even seen your girlfriend. That was only my secretary, Miss Borden. Is he crazy? I think it might clear things up if I were to tell you that until a short time ago, Mr. Cobb here was my fiancé. He's your fiancé? Was. Well, but I don't get it. Well, I'll make it clear to you, sir. Then this isn't the guy. Now, if you're running away from Ralph, you made a mistake. Well, let's let's with you. you can. Now, look, pal, we can talk this whole thing over. Until you agree to treat Miss Emily in an honorable fashion and marry her, we have nothing to talk about. Hey, wait a minute. If you're worried about what I think you are... I don't care to be more specific. Well, if that's what's bothering you, we can stop. Then you agree to do the honorable thing? Now, wait a minute. I can explain everything. You admit you were there together? Yes. No, no. We, we were there together, but, you see, she was in a cave and I was in the bottom of an old dry cistern. Oh, she was in a cave? And you were at the bottom of an old dry... Oh, 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 oh you, you tell me... Oh, oh, stop it! Stop it! Tell him it's all! Who you picked up? Why don't you tell him the whole thing's ridiculous? It's just silly. Is it? Well, surely, Mrs. Borden, you don't believe... What else can I believe? This has gone far enough! Oh, now, for heaven's sake, Emily, let that... uh, one second. <laughs> oh, Ralph, don't! No. <laughs> oh! Oh, you may have won for the moment. But the matter is not finished, sir. Oh, now, really, pal. I'm sure I can convince you, Mrs. Borden. I agree with Mr. Cobb, sir. Until you're ready to say what a gentleman would under the circumstances, I don't think I care to listen. Oh, now, please try to understand. I was only trying to assure you that we... We're going to be married, aren't we, Emily? The pig's eye we are. Now, Emily, honey... I'll handle this from now on, Graham, if you don't mind. And that goes for you, too. I've heard all I want to hear from you, you chaser. If I was crazy enough to think I was in love with you, after seeing all I've seen and knowing all I know, I just ought to be put away someplace. It was just infatuation, that's all. <laughs> Romantic, I thought. A philanderer. Oh, I saw your face when you read that note. Right after last night, too. Oh, gosh, what a wonderful life it'd be. Married to a rabbit-nosed chaser who'd run off every time he smelt a new perfume. Well, go ahead and run, Henry. Just run after any silly old female you don't even know. It's okay with me, because I'm through. Very pretty. Where'd you get that bouquet? Oh, out of here. I get a new one every day. I'm a glamour girl. <laughs> That's fine. You mean you find a bouquet of roses in there every day? No, sometimes they're in here. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, here, you might as well take these while they're still fresh. Say, are you Henry? Look, Mrs. Borden, I'm sorry to barge in like this, but I've just got to talk to Emily. I had hoped that by now you'd understand that my granddaughter does not want to see you, Mr. Summers. I know, but Furthermore, if I... Furthermore, she's not here. Well, couldn't I wait until she comes back? I propose to leave that at your discretion, Mr. Summers. I cannot force you to leave, but I hope it's plain that you're not welcome. Emily, Emily. Would it be all right if I left a note?
I'm sorry to bother you again, but I'd appreciate it if you'd give that note to Emily. I, uh, I don't quite know how to say this, Mrs. Borden, but I want you to understand my position. I want you to believe that I've tried to do the honorable thing, but it's pretty obvious how Emily feels, so I guess there's nothing more for me to do. I suppose it's better for everyone this way. That note is just an explanation that I feel I owe Emily. Goodbye! What is it? Oh, this is crazy. He says the pink lady's written him and promising to meet him in the park tomorrow at 10. He just wanted to make sure everything was off between us so, so he'd be free to meet her. But that's impossible. No, it isn't. I know who did this. That Constance dame knew what those letters did to Henry, and she's going to use this to take advantage of him. But after all, it doesn't matter to you anymore. No, it doesn't. Oh, yes, it does. Um, well, I mean, it makes me mad, Gran. If it hadn't been for her, this never would have happened. Constance? No, the gosh darn pink lady. Hello? Hello. Well, I thought you were never going to speak to me again. I didn't come here to speak to you. I just came to tell you you're crazy. Oh? I thought you covered that pretty thoroughly the last time. I just came to tell you that I wrote those notes. That there isn't any pink lady and anybody who tries to meet you here is going to take advantage of you. You mean deceive me? Yes. I don't believe it. Now, if you're silly enough to think I can't... I'm silly. Oh, oh, I like that. You said you wrote the notes, so there is a pink lady. Well, I don't And you that... met me in the park, didn't you? All right, under the circumstances, I don't mind if you take advantage of me. Why, Henry, That is, I... if you want to. Do you? No, I don't. All right, you're missing out on a golden opportunity. Now, don't you try to be smart. I worked for you for five years, and if I don't know you by now, I never will. Oh, I've seen you in one scrape after the other. Remember Jane, Eloise? What about the redhead from the Bronx with the great big blue eyes? Yes, you don't need me, you need a keeper. Now, may I say something? I love you. Well, I'm glad that's settled. Now maybe I can get a little sleep.